Welcome to the Solar Energy Channel, where you'll get an honest inside look at everything solar. I'm Warren, and with me today is Dale, and we're going to give you an update of what we know about the Inflation Reduction Act from just a few, few days ago, last week, when uh, we put out a video. Welcome, Dale. Good to have you again. Good to be here. Yeah. So let's talk about first, if we could just break it down for us, Dale, the difference between the commercial section in the tax code and the residential section. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that. I mean, it's been there forever. I mean, there's a section 25 deals with the residential uh, tax credit. And the, what makes it confusing is that typically the, intro, the, uh, the rates of the credit have been identical. So a lot of people just assume it's one tax credit, but there's a, a section 48, which is commercial. And a lot of the changes that we're seeing in this tax bill are just addressing those two sections. Um, so that's, that's, it's kind of not uh, really important to a lot of people because they're most interested in the rate of return, but it can affect things, especially in this new bill, like some of the new things they've added, which are primarily for section 48 or the commercial projects. So there are things in each section that may or may not apply to the other section. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. In fact, the fact that the interest, the, uh, I keep saying interest rate, but the uh, rate of uh, the tax credit is the same, you could almost say it's coincidental. I mean, they, they've kind of landed it that way, I'm sure, in the past, but uh, even now in the new bill, there is definitely a discrepancy, especially between large systems under Section 48 and the small residential systems. Right, and there's also a discrepancy. The residential projects are not eligible for some of the add-on bonuses that That's the correct. commercials are. Yes. All right, Dale, so help us understand now where a residential project stands in terms of the ITC, where what's happening this year and then going forward for the next 10 years. Yeah, that's the easy one. So the residential basically went from 26%, which is what it is in the current year, 2022, uh, to back to 30%, which it had been in prior years. And it's gonna stay there for 10 years. So uh, that rolls back to January 1, 2022. All projects in 2022 that are already installed will receive that 30% credit. And going forward, it will be at 30% uh, for all residential systems. All right, Dale, so let's talk about the transferability of the tax credit, because that's new in the act. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, previously, uh, you had to be able to use the tax credit and it was non-refundable. So uh, if you weren't paying taxes or owing taxes, you weren't gonna get that money back. Now they've made it that you can actually sell the tax credit. And this applies to both the residential and the commercial. And uh, the mechanics of that aren't clear yet, whether you do that through an accounting firm, uh, you know, personally, whether you can do it, or whether you're gonna do it through a, a broker of some sort who is uh, packaging these things to sell them. That's not clear, and, that'll, and that will become clear. But, but the nice thing to know is that uh, just about everybody can take advantage of the tax credit under the new bill. Yeah, but there's some requirements to it. You can only sell it once, you can't sell it to multiple people, and you can't piecemeal it and sell a portion of it. Correct. And it's a cash transaction, so you have to take cash for it, and that transaction is not taxable to neither the transferor or the transferee. So that, that's kind of a nice feature. So Dale, historically with residential projects and the ITC, you could take the tax credit in the year that your system was turned on, and then you could carry it forward, but there was a lack of clarity on how far you could carry that tax credit forward. How has that changed with this act? Yeah, so as far as I know, there's not been any change made to Section 25B as far as the carry forward. So I think you'll still be able to carry it forward. The problem before was that the ITC under Section 25 expired and went to zero. And the question was, when that happened, would you be able to roll anything into that year? And it never really was clarified. So we could run into this again in 2034, 2035 when this the new one steps down. But for the next 12 years, you don't have to worry about it. You're going to be able to roll it forward. So Dale, in terms of carrying the tax credit forwards and backwards, how does that work for commercial customers? Yeah, so for commercial customers in the past, they've been allowed to do that. They've been allowed to take it backward one year and they take it forward for 20 years and I believe that's correct. Um, but under the new bill, they can go back three years and they can go forward 22 years. Now, I wonder how many will roll forward 22 years, but the, the backward three years is very, uh, very attractive if you've had profitable years in the last couple of years. Yeah, and you have the ability to sell it, so that's why yes. you're questioning whether or not somebody would carry it forward as long as 22 years. Right. 
So just to clarify, for commercial, for residential projects, you can use it in the current year that your system is turned on, or you can carry it forward, but we're not really sure how many years that, it, that you can carry that forward. On the commercial side, you can use it in the current year, you can go back three years, and then carry it forward for an additional 22 years, if necessary, if you don't sell the credits themselves. All right, so Dale, in addition to the 30%, or the way this, the 30% structure, first of all, there's some rules that apply to larger projects. Right. Let's talk about those requirements. Okay, so uh, if, a, if a project is less than one megawatt AC of output, uh, the rules are different and they're much simpler. In that case, you get a 30% tax credit and uh, you don't have to worry about some of your other things, but there are some add-ons for that as well. But let's talk about the ones that are over a megawatt. If they're over a megawatt, uh, the, the tax credit up to 30% is built and it starts with 6%. So there's a 6% base. And then the next 24% comes from two things. You have to have a, uh, an apprenticeship program that's registered and you have to have, you have to be paying prevailing wage on the project. That, those are new requirements and are, are rather uncommon in most of solar in the past. So to get to that 30%, you're gonna start with six and then you're gonna to have to have the prevailing wage and the apprenticeship program and that gets you to 30. Then there are some add-ons. What are those add-ons and how much are they? Yeah, so the add-ons basically, they're kind of like 10% increments. The first 10% is for domestic content. And, that, and the interesting thing about the add-ons is that they apply to any commercial project. The one megawatt greater than or less than does not really have a play here. It's just if it's a commercial project. So the, the first one is a 10% domestic product. Uh, and and the, the content is, is a, a, an accelerating schedule. So it starts at 40, goes to 45, goes each year, it changes a little bit. 45, that's the percent of the, the project that is domestic content. Yeah. Yeah, but, but that hasn't been defined yet. Right. So, so the 40%, is that 40% of the total hardware? Is that 40% of the total project cost? Those are the things that the IRS is going to have to, to clarify for us. Speaking of which, when should we expect the IRS to clarify this for us? <laughs> I actually read a, uh, I, I read a, uh, a quote from uh, Charles Reddick, I believe is the commissioner of the IRS, uh, just a couple of days ago, and he said, this is going to take months. So the expect I saw an accounting firm uh, did a review of this and they were saying they think it will be by the end of the first quarter of 2023. So that's three months after a lot of these provisions go into effect. Interesting. Yeah, it's not ideal. No. Not ideal. <laughs> no, no. All right, so there's the, the, the first add-on that we talked about. What other add-ons are there? Okay, so there's uh, something about a system being built in an area that's considered an energy community. That definition is a little loose right now, but we know that brownfields would qualify okay. in that area. It would be an area that's been affected by fossil fuel uh, plant shutdowns uh, or raw material mining, uh, such as coal and that kind of thing. That's the energy community. And then there's a third one for uh, low income communities and that credit can be 10 or 20% and I don't know the details around that one. So you could potentially, in a commercial project, get a total ITC of 60%, 70% even, okay. if you bundle all of these, you were lucky enough if the stars aligned and you were able to take uh, advantage of the domestic content, the low income, right. the brownfields, et cetera. Yeah, that's correct. I think th the projects that do that will be kind of few and far between, particularly for behind the meter people. Yeah. So if you're installing it for yourself, your own business, whatever, most of those extra credits probably will not apply. So Dale, the IRS is going to come out with these guidelines sometime in the near future. Could be before in the end of the year, could be in the first quarter, could be Q2. We don't, we just don't know. Right. How does that impact projects uh, other than the, all of the unknowns that we know, but some of these projects that want to get installed now, is there an advantage for them to do so? Yeah, there certainly is because the, uh, the requirements around prevailing wage and the apprenticeship program, uh, those will only become effective 60 days after the IRS issues their guidelines. So there's a 60 day window. I mean, it's, it's now there's a window and possibly in the 2023 until the IRS issues the guidelines. And then there's a 60 day, an additional 60 day window. After that, everything is into effect. The apprenticeship program, the prevailing wage, and, and it depends on when the project starts, not when the project finishes. So if a project, if the IRS were to come out with the guidelines on January 1st, these larger commercial projects over a megawatt 
would have to start construction in January or February before that 60 day ends and 60 days after the guidelines came out. And if they did, they would be exempt from the prevailing wage and the apprenticeship program. That's right. Yeah. Now, since you picked January and February, it might be March 1st, but. Yes, thanks. <laughs> okay, so now we've talked about residential, we've talked about commercial, let's talk about nonprofits, government entities, and municipalities. Yeah, this is a pretty exciting area, actually. This market is the most dramatically impacted by this tax bill, probably. Uh, formerly, these are non-tax paying entities. So the, the ITC was always a non-refundable tax credit. So they didn't pay tax, they couldn't use it. And so they were always forced into a third party arrangement, a, a power purchase agreement, some sort of lease uh, with a third party who could use that tax equity. Uh, now the rules have changed. So uh, under this new bill, it is, there's a direct payment option where the IRS will actually pay a nonprofit who does not pay taxes the amount of the tax credit that that project earns. So, you know, 30%, I mean, before a, a, a nonprofit might have saved uh, 10, 15%, uh, maybe towards 20 at maximum, uh, as far as the tax credit and, and, the, and those benefits. Now, the entire 30% becomes available to the nonprofit or to a local water and sewer authority, a state government entity. Uh, all of those people can get a direct payment from the IRS uh, which would typically be around 30%. Now the add-ons of the ITC under the commercial rules would also apply to them. So depending where they are, um, they might get an additional 10, even 20% on that direct payment. And there is a, a requirement for the domestic content on these nonprofits. Yeah. Um, and so if they don't meet that requirement, uh, their, their tax credit or their direct payment will be reduced. How is that going to be calculated? Yeah, so the 10% uh, domestic content rule, if they don't meet that on a project, of course, that would be an additional 10% if they met it. If they don't meet it, there's a penalty kicks in, and I believe it starts in 2024, not in 2023. And that penalty, the way it's written, it's 10% of the ITC that they would expect to get. So it's a little unclear as to whether that would be 10% from the 30 or whether that would be a multiplier of 10% times the 30 and they would still get, you know, like 27% of, of a 30% of a tax credit, 10% less. So that's not been clarified yet. Okay, but to, yeah. just to clarify that piece, if a nonprofit or government entity municipality is looking to move forward now, the penalty only kicks in in 2024. So they right. can install it not meet those requirements and still get the 30 percent as long as it's before 2024. that's the way it appears okay yes. there's another there's another interesting little wrinkle around that but i think it's going to be an administrative nightmare probably for companies like us and that is there are two exceptions to that rule for the direct payment uh, around that 10 percent uh, domestic content the one is if it raises the cost of the system by 25 percent or more there's an exception and they say the secretary of the treasurer can issue that. So I don't know how that would work. And the other one is that if you can't secure the product, then there's also an exception. So we just have to see how they work. And who's actually going to be paying out there? Is that going to come from the, the, the IRS, from the U United States Treasury? They're going to send a check to these entities? Yes. Yes, they will. Yeah, so that's fascinating. And, you know, we wonder how that's going to happen. Is it going to be through an IRS form that they have to fill out? You know, how do they request that? That will all come out uh, from the IRS. You know, you could look at that and say, well, they're paying a lot more money to, uh, to these nonprofits, but the reality is most of that was being paid anyway to PPA providers or investors previously. So it's not necessarily a lot more money being paid, but it's gonna go direct and it's a much simpler mechanism for the nonprofit. Yeah. One piece we didn't talk about, let's talk about that for a second, are nonprofits that are actually for-profit businesses. For-profit businesses that just aren't making a profit. <laughs> they can now actually sell the tax credit right. and, and, and go solar. Yeah. They can't get a direct payment, Warren. No, they can't get a direct payment. But, <laughs> but they, they can, can sell it. Yeah, they can sell their tax credit to another. And, you know, rarely will you get a dollar for a dollar on the tax credit. Sure. When, that, when that's traded, uh, you know, they, they might get uh, 75 cents or 80 cents on the dollar. But they're getting something and they're getting it right away. And finally, Dale, let's talk about energy storage and how that's changed with the Inflation Reduction Act. Yeah, so previously for energy storage, you had to be installing that uh, within a year of when you installed your solar system. 
for it to qualify for the, the ITC. Under the new bill, it qualifies on its own. You don't even have to have solar. You can just install a battery backup in your house or in your business, wherever you want to, and it will qualify for uh, the 30% ITC. And I think the, the, the key thing there, what they're trying to achieve is our grid needs storage for all these renewables that are going on. So that's a good way to incentivize it. And I think you know that, that's very relevant to the future of our grid. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dale. That was really informative. We appreciate your insight on this. Please remember that this is the act is the, the language has just come out. It's all preliminary. This is just our understanding of what we've read and, and how we understand it at this point. Things could change and they probably will change and we'll continue to provide update update videos just like this in the coming weeks or days as we learn more about this exciting Inflation Reduction Act.